adjust the leading coefficient and vertex coordinates to make the blue parabola match the orange parabola. Now we've already seen how we can go about shifting these parabolas. If we subtract something from y, it actually shifts the parabola up by that amount. And we've already talked about that in the video on shifting and scaling parabolas. But let's actually see it in practice, because this is actually going to allow us to experiment. So we'll see if we increase this, that's actually shifting it down. While if we decrease it, it shifts it up. But we actually do have to shift it down for this example. Now at least the y value of our vertexes, vertices look the same. And similarly, similarly, when we shift the whatever we're squaring, whenever we if we shift, if we subtract a value here, it shifts it to the right. While if we add a value here, it shifts it to the left. And let's verify that. So if we subtract a value here, it shifts it to the right. And if we add values here, it shifts it to the left. So just like that, it looks like I've been able to get our vertices to coincide. This vertex right over here is at the point x equals negative 4, y equals negative 3. And it's no coincidence, those are the values that make x equals negative 4 makes this 0, and y equals negative 3 makes this 0. But these parabolas still don't match up. This yellow parabola seems to increase faster. So the scaling factor right over here seems too low for our blue one. So let's increase it. And there we go. If we put a 2 there, it went fast. It went, it's, it's growing fast enough. If we put a 3 there, it's growing too fast. If we put a 0 there, it's a flat line, and then it becomes negative. So let's bring that back to just positive 2. And we're done.